Hey, it's Nathan Williams with Crazy on Marketing. In this video, we're gonna be talking all about the Facebook Pixel. We're gonna talk about what it is, where to find it, how to install it and set it up and what it can do. So we'll talk about some events and we'll also talk about custom audiences. So these are retargeting audiences. So we have a lot to cover, let's get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and cover some of the basics and then we'll head over to the Ads Manager and talk about installing it and all that type of stuff. So first things first, without the Facebook Pixel, your advertising efforts are going to fail. So Facebook uses this Pixel information to automatically optimize your advertising efforts. It's also how you're gonna track results for your advertising efforts. And you can also do some other things like track events and create custom audiences, i.e. retargeting audiences with your Pixel. So again, without it, you're gonna fail. So you wanna pay attention and you wanna make sure that it's properly set up before you go out and start advertising things. Now all the pixel is, it's just a little snippet of JavaScript code that you're gonna put on your website and like the header area of your website and this allows Facebook to track people on your website. So if somebody clicks on your ad and then, picks, and then Facebook can then watch how that person engages with your website. It, it sees what pages they're landing on, what they're clicking on, what they're opting in for, what they're buying. It tracks all that information and feeds it back into Facebook's super almighty algorithm. And then, you know, you can do a bunch of stuff, auto optimization, retargeting, stuff like that, uh, based off of your pix pixel information. Now it does allow you to track events and conversions. So this is like leads, purchases, adds to cart, clicks, etc. So those are events and conversions. Also allows you to create custom audiences. So this is people that have landed on your website or maybe people that have purchased products. So you create an audience of buyers or an audience of people that have opted in. So a leads audience. And then you can retarget those people, which means puts ad, put ads in front of people that have already done certain actions. So you can advertise to all your leads and try and get them to take the next step, i.e. buy something. Or you could advertise to all your buyers and try and get them to buy something else or upgrade their order or something to that effect. So you can do a lot of stuff with the Facebook Pixel and the information that it collects. Um, and then you can also create lookalike audiences with your custom audiences. And a lookalike audience is an audience that looks like uh, one of your custom audiences. So if you have a custom audience of buyers, so a buyer's audience, you can create an audience of people that look like your buyers. And more often than not, these lookalike audiences are where the money is because Facebook will go out there, find people that look like your buyers, and you can advertise directly to people that look like your buyers. And typically, this produces very good results. Now, I also wanna point out that several platforms do have native integrations or plugins with the Facebook Pixel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install it without like a native integration. But if you have one of these platforms like do a quick Google search and see if you can natively install your Pixel because more than likely that's gonna be a better, better option because it's going to automatically track events for you. Like for example, if you have WordPress or Shopify or Thrivecart or Samcart or Squarespace or you know, there's dozens or hundreds of platforms out there, um, it's gonna automatically track like opt-ins or purchases or ads to carts or wish lists and all that type of stuff. Like, these platforms are built to track that type of information. So if you have a platform, I would double check to see if it supports the Facebook Pixel. And if it does, I, you should probably use that integration compared to just installing it in the header like we're gonna do in this video. However, I recommend you still watch this video because I'm still gonna show you how to get to the Pixel, how to install it, and then how to create audiences with that information. So still stick around, even if you're using one of these platforms because this video will still be helpful to you. Now, the number one rule of thumb for your Pixel is one Pixel per business, one Pixel per business. So. You know, a lot of businesses or entrepreneurs, we have several different websites or properties, right? Like we might have a WordPress website, then we might have ClickFunnels, we're cr creating funnels, or we might have Thrivecart or a Shopify store or Samcart store or whatever. We have different platforms. However, they're all for the same business, right? We still have the same one business or maybe you have multiple businesses, in which case you'd have multiple pixels, but even if you have multiple platforms or services, if it's for the same business, you're gonna use that same pixel across all your different platforms, okay? So that's one thing I wanna make sure it's crystal clear. One pixel per business, one pixel per business. Get a lot of questions on that. That's why you know, I made a whole slide about this. So hopefully that's clear. Let's head over to the ads manager and get into the pixel. 
And so here we are in the ads manager and what we want to do is go up to our menu in the top left corner here and go to events manager and we wait for it to load. And what we want to do now is go to switch to previous version. So click that option. All right, so real quick, just in case Facebook decides to change their dashboard, they change it like every five minutes it seems like. If you don't have this switch to previous version button, please look for a button like add event right here. So if you click this button, you'll see the opportunity to add your pixel code. And so you can click this one here and then you can copy your pixel code from here. So if you don't have this one, look for this add event button or there might be some other button. I'll try and link to it in the course notes if it changes. And so I just wanna point that out because things move all the time and I don't want you to feel lost or anything like that. Back to the video. And now what we wanna go ahead and do is come to add new data source right here. So click on this blue button. And of course we wanna go ahead and select Facebook pixel, right? That's what we're going and setting up. So now we need to go ahead and name our pixel. So I recommend naming it the name of your business. And I just called mine demo account because it's just demonstration purposes, but I would go with the name of your business and then throw in the, the link to your website. And then we wanna go ahead and hit continue. So then it gives us a couple options here. We can go ahead and use like a partner account to set up the pixel. And that's what I was talking about with using like a WordPress plugin, or if you do browse other partners, you'll see like all the shopping carts it integrates with like easily. So again, if you use like Shopify or WordPress or anything like that, I recommend using one of these integrations to make sure it's all set up properly. Again, it tracks a lot of stuff uh, automatically for you. So if you have that option available to you, I would go through this top option, but for this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up manually. If you know how to do it manually, you should be able to apply these concepts to whatever platform you're using. All right, so now it gives us some instructions. First things first, we have to install the base code on our website, and this right here is the base code, and this is the pixel right here. So this is what we wanna go ahead and install, and it tells us where to add it on our site. So it says right above the closing head tag of our website. Now I'm using ClickFunnels right here, but it doesn't really matter what platform you're using. Usually you're allowed to edit or add code to the header section of whatever platform you might have. So ClickFunnels or Kartra or you know different, different website, you can likely edit the header. But if you're on ClickFunnels to add it to your funnel, you just come to the settings area of your funnel. And then we see right here, we have head tracking code. And we can go ahead and paste our code right in there, just like that. Don't edit it, don't modify it. You don't have to know what it means. I have no idea what it means, but I know that it tracks the information. So I'll come down here, save and update settings, and boom, just like that, my pixel has been installed on all the pages of my ClickFunnels funnel. So it's very easy to install your pixel. Let's come back over to the ads manager now. And we have another option here. So turn on automatic advanced matching. And I wanna read this real quick because it's kind of important. So use information that your customers have already provided to your business, such as their email address or phone numbers to match your website's visitors to people who are on Facebook. This can help you attribute more conversions to your ads on Facebook and reach more people through remarketing campaigns. So basically what that's saying is it's going to see what type of information people enter on your website. So when they fill out a form, it's going, Facebook's gonna like watch them fill out that form and it can connect that information with what Facebook has in their database and basically make, give you more accurate and better tracking. Now, I do recommend clicking this learn more option there is some stuff you're gonna to have to add to your privacy policy and also depending on where you live, like you might not be able to do this. So you definitely wanna read a little bit about it so that way you're not breaking any laws or anything like that. But if you're allowed to do it and wanna do it, I recommend turning it on and then you can go ahead and you know track different bits of information. Again, go ahead and make sure you read like the privacy policy stuff to, to do stuff the right way. And then we get into step three down here, which is test the base code. So this, you know, make sure our pixel works. And right now we have a red dot. So what I wanna do is grab my, my website and come back in here, throw it in there and send some test traffic and see if my pixel is properly installed. So let's see what happens here. And if I come back to my ads manager, we see that my pixel is active. So it looks like I properly installed it on my page, on my website, on my funnel. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue now. And then it recommends we set up some event tracking. So this is leads, purchases, ads to carts, things like that. And definitely you wanna track events because that's where you know you see how well your advertising efforts are doing. But that's like the next level. And I have other videos on events. So if you wanna learn more about events, 
you know, I'll have links to those videos down below. For our purposes right now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. And so just like that, we've set up and installed the Pixel on our website. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you in this video was how to create custom audiences. So here we are in the Pixel screen, and I'm gonna go ahead and select Create Audience and Custom Audience. Alternatively, just, just for educational purposes, you could come up here to the top left menu and go to Audiences, and we can go ahead and create an audience from this screen as well. So a couple different places you can create an audience. You can also create it as you set up as an ad set too. So lots of places, but anyway, when you get to create a custom audience, the concept's the same. So create a custom audience, and I wanna go ahead and create one based, based off of website activity. So click that option. And then we can go ahead and enter whatever parameters we want in order to create that audience of people. So include people who meet any of the following criteria, or we can set it to all of the following criteria. So choose what's applicable. Then you wanna go ahead and make sure you have the correct pixel selected. Now, if you have multiple pixels in your account, this is important. If you only have one pixel in your account, well, then you, you only got one option. All right, then we have another drop down menu here and we have different options like we can use all website visitors, people who visited specific web pages, visitors by time spent, and then from events. And right now we only have one event, page view, but as you install events and on your website, you'll see more events pop up down here that you could go ahead and choose from. And again, link below on event tracking and things like that. So anyway, the next thing we have is time frame. So 30 days, seven days, 180 days. And this is how long somebody stays in this particular audience. So depending on your strategy, whether this is like a retargeting audience or maybe you're gonna create a lookalike audience based off of this audience, you might choose a different time frame. And then there's a couple more options down here, like you can include more people. So this creates like an or statement. So all visitors in the past 180 days, alternatively, people who visited specific web pages in the last 30 days, and we can do website contains, does not contains, or equals. So it does not contain free or something like that. So this probably wouldn't be the best audience in the world because we're already targeting all, all website visitors. And so this or statement doesn't really make any sense. However, I just wanted to show you that you could include more people. But moving on, we could also do an and also. So they must do this and also this right here. We could also further refine by frequency. So the number of times somebody's done these actions right here. Or we could go ahead and close this out and further refine by device. So people with that meet these requirements here and on this device right here. Alternatively, we could go ahead and exclude people and, and we have the same type of options down here. So as you can tell, you can get really crazy with these types of custom audiences. And basically you can you know hone in on exactly the person that you wanna go ahead and create a custom audience of. So once you have your strategy down, it just takes some playing around to you know get who you want. Now for the sake of example, I'm gonna close some of this out of here because it doesn't make much sense because I don't have much going on since I just set up this pixel and everything. So I'm just gonna do all website visitors in the last 180 days. So, and I'm gonna call my audience all visitors last 180 days. We could also go ahead and add a description if we need you know, more details on our audience. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create my audience. And just like that, I have an audience being built of people that have visited my website in the last 180 days. So that can be very handy for retargeting. Also, just to finish this out, let's go ahead and create a lookalike audience. So we click on this little checkbox here and we can go ahead and do create lookalike. And now we can create an audience of people that look like people that have visited our website in the last 180 days. And we can go ahead and select a different region or country. So like United States. And you can add multiple countries if you want to. So if you wanna do like United Kingdom as well, you can go ahead and stack in a few different countries or regions. And then it asks us to select the audience size. And the first question it asks us is to select the number of lookalike audiences that we wanna go ahead and create. And the default is one, so that's easy to understand and explain. So I'll do this first. And so basically what we're doing right here is we're creating an audience of people that look like people that have visited my website in the last 180 days that are from the United Kingdom and the United States. So the top 1% of the population that look like people that visit my website are gonna be in this look like audience. Alternatively, you know, I could drag this to 2%, so about 5.6 million people, or to 3% or 4% and so on. So of course, the further out you go, like the less, you know, defined the person's gonna be, the less they'll look like uh, your custom audience, right? So that's very cool, very handy. And then we could go ahead and create like three 
look like audiences. And so one strategy is to do like two lookalike audiences that are 1% apart. So zero to 1% and then one to 2%. And then a larger audience of like the next closest people that's like two to 4% or two to 5%. And that's kind of like a really broad audience, but you know, it's still the top 5% of people that look like your custom audience. And it gives us a breakdown of the audiences that are gonna be created here. So 1% of Great Britain and the United States that look like all visitors in the last 180 days and then one to 2% and then two to 5%. So depending on your advertising strategy and how you wanna scale your advertising efforts, look like audiences can be a great way to do it. And by creating different size audiences, it offers you a lot of flexibility. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and hit create audience now. And now what it's gonna do, go ahead and create my look like audiences. Now I did get an error message that my source is too small. Please choose a source that includes at least 100 people in the same country. So that's an important thing to note. Your custom audience does need at least 100 people inside of it before you can create a look like audience. And of course, the more people in your custom audience that you have, the more precise and detailed your look like audience will be. So I recommend like 500 to 1000 people in a custom audience before you go and create a look like audience. That way, you know, you have a good data set to pull from. However, Facebook will let you create a lookalike audience even if you only have 100 people in your custom audience. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close this for the time being. And so that's pretty much it for this video. We did talk about a lot of stuff and I'll include links to the videos that I mentioned down below in this description. So if you wanna learn more about like events, definitely go check that out because events are critically important. And of course, if you have any questions or anything like that, please be sure to ask them. I wanna make sure that you know, you're know you squared away and ready and confident in setting up your pixel because again, without your pixel, you will fail, okay? So you do need to make sure it's right. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, or subscribes, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.